Okay, so desktop upstairs. I have launched Zwift, but I have not actually clicked ride to connect everything. I'll show you how I do all that. I could do it from here, but I want to show you all the steps. So the desktop is up here. The this is the Ant Plus cable extension that I've had to add because I'm a whole floor away from where my computer is. I actually got this 50 foot long Ant Plus um, extender from Amazon. So um, the bike, um, I actually have my non-functioning treadmill set up as my trainer desk and um, I keep my cycling shoes downstairs I have my fan set up um, to where it's automatically blowing directly at me as soon as I'm on the trainer and my TV which is not a smart TV um, and Zwift does not connect through Roku, so I had to um, get a dongle that's basically like a Chromecast dongle, but it's a no-name. It doesn't specifically work with Chromecast, but it's the same thing, essentially. Um, and that's plugged into the HDMI on the back of the TV, same place that the Roku would connect to. Um, And my TV is waiting for the connection to my phone. Um, but I'm actually going to connect it to my um, tablet so that I can continue to film and show you how everything is set up. So, now remember the computer upstairs is set on already has Zwift on the computer screen, but it hasn't actually launched yet. Um, normally I would connect to Zwift with my um, either my phone or my tablet because the processor in those is faster than what it is in my old phone that I use at home just on Wi-Fi as another device or another little mini tablet to connect to everything. So let me get the tablet up here. So I'm going to go ahead and connect to my desktop through my tablet. And because I'm so far away, it won't connect via Bluetooth. So I have to use um, an app that is called Space Desk. <clears throat> We'll see it is connecting and it is connected. So essentially that's a picture. Um, I've mirrored my desktop down to my tablet and I can actually control my computer through my tablet now. The only thing I don't have obviously is a standalone keyboard. Um, but I've essentially turned my tablet into a touch screen control for my desktop which is upstairs. So. I'm going to, uh, before I click ride here, um, I actually want to cast the screen from my Android tablet up to my TV so that I can actually watch what's going on on my TV screen instead of looking down at my tablet all the time. So to do that, <clears throat> I go to Smart View on my tablet. Well, there we go. And I want to cast, oh, I don't want it to, I want, I don't want to connect to the, there we go. Should have done the casting to the TV before I did my space desk connection. 
<clears throat> went a little out of order there. You see it's waiting for connection. Hmm. It's usually faster than that. in progress. Hmm. Okay, well, this might have to go to plan B and connect through the old phone. Wi-Fi Anywhere turned on. I'm not really sure. How. There we go. Obtaining IP address. So the tablet is connecting to there. So my tablet screen is now mirrored up on the TV screen. Okay. Now we're going to go back to Space Desk. Alright. So connected to my tap to my desktop here it is mirrored up here and I'm gonna go ahead and click ride all right so Zwift is launching it's actually remember this is actually running off of my desktop upstairs if you have a laptop this is much easier because you could just have your laptop connected down here um, and usually a laptop will directly connect to the little dongle that I have there. <clears throat> or if you have a smart TV, you can connect the computer usually uh, via Bluetooth or Wi-Fi. Actually sounds like I might need to blow my tires up a little bit. That's what that squeaking is. Um, kind of is an indication to me that my tire isn't inflated enough. So it's because I've already paired everything before, it's actually connecting to everything. It's going to connect my um, speed and cadence sensors from my Garmin, speed and cadence sensors plus the uh, smart trainer. Usually it finds it right away. There we go. And heart rate monitor here. All right, so it's connected to everything. <clears throat> Um, and these are actually people that I am either connected to or are Zwifting right now. And <clears throat> I can either choose to ride with them. So... I am the one in the red GCN jersey. Now you'll kind of see every once in a while a lag in the, uh, and it's telling me to close the gap so that I can draft, although I'm probably not going to be able to catch them. I need to shift. Um, anyway, that's how everything connects for Zwift for me. And then I usually move this off. Now there's also a Zwift app where you can control which way you turn. You can see who's around you. Um, it's kind of a companion thing, but you cannot run the app exclusively. You cannot run Zwift exclusively from the app. Um, this one has to run off of your computer. 
All right, so I'm going to go ahead and stop this video, and then I'll show you how I connect through for Ruby and Be Cool. Okay, um, that was Zwift. This is Ruby, and Ruby is just, um, you connect through your um, phone app, either Apple or Android. Um, so I've got it connecting through my good phone, because it's got the faster processor, and recording with my old phone. Um, again, you can do this through your tablet, through your phone, an iPod touch, something like that. So with Ruby, you go in, you can either do some of their preset workouts, you can race, you can challenge somebody. Free ride is you real, literally just ride, um, or routes, and you've got a choice of um, premium routes, the popular ones, stuff that you've created, flat, um, Alps, so something you favorited. The Tour de Italia, you can actually do those races. Long distances, mountain bike trails, short distances. So you can see it's all broken out. La Tour de France, um, triathlon routes that are in here, famous uphills. So um, I've actually done um, the um, Chatfield South to north around the reservoir. I've done that. That's actually in, um, I think, either Denver or Boulder is where that route is from. Um, that's that's a pretty fun, pretty short little route, um, but it has video with it. Um, let me show you that one. So when you go into it, it kind of gives you the details. Um, gives you the map that um, tells you the elevation that you'll climb, how long is the route, the average um, incline percentage, and the max incline percentage. <clears throat> and then you can select, select. Uh, I don't know that you have to calibrate each time. I don't. Um, and then I've, uh, you can either choose race or training. I honestly don't know the difference between the two. Um, if you do a virtual partner, um, let me show you that. You actually choose who you want your virtual partner to be. It's a little like trying to pick somebody to ride with. You, do you want somebody who's faster than you on average or slower than you or about your pace? You know, How are you trying to challenge yourself? Because the point is to try to stay with them. So let me... Choose somebody here. I generally have to go way, way, way down the list to find somebody as slow as I am. On average, even on a flat route. I'll just choose somebody here. Eighteen, and then click training. Again, I have my phone mirrored to my TV screen. Um, do you want to warm up? Then it gives you a warm up period. You're not really on the route, or just start training, and it takes you straight to the route. So that's your choices here: start training or warm up. I'll click start training. 5, 4, 3, counts you in, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and then you are on the map um, to actually change the view. Um, 
Um, no, I don't want to create a lap. Okay, so here's where you change the view. Um, do you want to see the map view? Do you want to see the video, the elevation? I want to see the video. So there it is. So I am on the route. Hmm, not really sure what's going on there, why it's green like that. Oh, okay. So it shows that I'm, if you look up here at the virtual partner, I am, of the two of us, I am behind. I am the second. But it gives you what your current incline is. Um, and the red line is um, how far you are along in that segment. Um, red is an incline, green is a downhill or flat. So you'll see I've got um, a downhill coming up there. But it is very nice because I'm actually on a road. I'm seeing, seeing the atmosphere, seeing you know the terrain, the scenery. <clears throat> okay, so it takes you all the way through. You can see your stats along the top. And it's running off of there. I should sure focus. So that's Ruby. Okay, the last one I'm going to show is the Be Cool app. Again, it's a standalone app, doesn't require a computer connection. It works directly through the computer, and because my computer, my app, or my phone is cast to my TV, it's actually playing the sound from the app through my TV as well, which is nice. I, I haven't been able to figure out how to do that with Ruby or Zwift for that matter, um, so I generally have music playing when I'm on those. So, again, you can choose some of the pre-programmed workouts. I can join a live route, so somebody who's already on a route, I could join them. Um, join an epic ride, which is scheduled rides. Or, I can go to my routes that I've either, either done or I've programmed in to do. Um, I have the St. Louis um, Sprint Triathlon in there and I've got the Chicago Lakefront Trail that I've actually done before. That's another video one. So there's actual video of somebody on the route. I click start here. Actually loads a little bit slower than Ruby from what I have found. So it kind of gives you an over overview here and then it says to start I have to stop pedaling. So um, all right. All right. It actually gives you a warm-up period and then when you're ready to actually start you stop again and then it resets the clock if I don't want to continue with the warm-up I just stay stopped and now it's going to start the route all right and there are I've chosen some virtual riders that are about my my pace or somebody to challenge me. Um, this is the 3D version. Um, I can change the view to actually be the video. Let 
me see if I can figure out how to do that in the route. Mm. No. No. I do not want to end. Out the route. Hmm. Controls. Swipe left to right to change view. Okay. I don't know. I've tried to do this while riding before and I couldn't get it to actually change the view. <clears throat> I don't know. Zoom back out. There we go. Okay, so now it's on the actual video view of the route. So if there is a sequenced, a synced video of the route that you're on, you'll get to see it just like if you were on a video route on Ruby. Which is nice. Again, running strictly off of the app, which is all synced. Um, I had already previously synced it to my Smart Trainer and my Garmin. So that's Be Cool. I like Be Cool a little bit better than Ruby because it will take a route that I have entered and try to convert it to a 3D route, even if there's no video, <clears throat> if the GPS coordinates are good enough. So it makes it a little bit more realistic than just map view. But it gives you the opportunity to train on actual routes.